Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, glad to have you. Let's get right into it. We have faith makes one rich. Faith makes one rich. In order for you to wage war, either spiritually or physically, you need to be rich. You need to have money in this world. You need a lot of money in order to wage war. The bigger the war, the more money you need. Okay? Now, spiritually, you need weapons. You need weapons. You need to have a spiritual wealth, a spiritual rich, being spiritually rich. There you go. Just to rephrase that, spiritually rich and then earthly rich in order to, for you to wage against both worlds. Because we're, we're fighting a spiritual war and a physical war out here. Evilness is crazy out there right now. Evilness is increasing. Sin is increasing. Wow. I've been hearing some things and I don't even watch the news. I don't even watch the news. I don't really go into the uh, local news. A little bit of the local news, worldly news. Oh, man. It is crazy out there. We actually just had a flood, and my condolences, condolences goes to those that lost their family members on the flood over here in Lompoc, uh, near Lompoc, and uh, my prayers go out to all the family. Let's get into it. We have a Bible study. We usually do Bible studies here, but as you can see, I just started this channel. I'm working for the Lord, okay? I'm working for, for the Lord. Let's, let's put that straight. I'm working for the Lord, and little by little, he's promoting me. He's, pl he's promoting me. If you're new to my channel or uh, you're not aware of my position here, I actually, my background position, I used to be in the military. I used to be in the military for a few years in the Marine Corps, to be more specific, and I did serve overseas. I served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. I was a drill instructor in the Marine Corps. I was a martial arts instructor in the Marine Corps. So I know a little bit about training, fighting, uh, discipline, and uh, getting out of our comfort zone. So here, the Lord, the Lord has called me. The Lord has called me, and I'm starting in the lowest rank. I believe I'm in the lowest rank. I got saved in 2014. So it's been around nine years. It's, it's been around nine years. And I know the word. I know the word enough for me to be saved. All right, enough for me to be saved. I, you get saved by grace through faith, okay? By grace through faith. Once the Lord called me and I, and I accepted his gift of salvation, he forgave me of all my sins. He cleansed me. He gave me a new heart. And he's still working with me. He's still working on me. And little by little, I'm getting promoted. I'm getting promoted to see what exactly who he wants me to do, what position he wants me to hold in the body of Christ. And because of my background, because of my military background, I think he's going to use me for one thing. And that, that is to expose the wolves in sheep's clothing and to edify. To expose wolves in that are in sheep's clothing and to edify. I always ask the Lord in my prayer, see exactly what he wants me to do for him while we're here in this earth. And till now, I, I've been just kind of sharing the word with my family members, all my, my wife and kids, they're all saved. They all have the Lord. They are all sealed with the Holy Spirit. And they love, they love the Lord. So he has saved me and my household. So I've been, we usually do Bible studies. I usually edify them through the week. And it's, and especially on Sundays, we get together and we do prayer, meditation, and we worship the Lord. So his word is truth by which we are sanctified. Okay, his word is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. 
The Lord has given me the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nevertheless, I will not rejoice in that, that the spirits are subject to me, but rather rejoice because my name is definitely written in the book of life. Written in heaven. So what I'm going to be doing on this video here is learning what a wolf in sheep's clothing is like are we supposed to even expose a wolf in sheep's clothing the lord, the lord has given all of us a certain gift these gifts are for us to edify the body of christ the army of christ the marine corps of christ the soldiers of Christ, the warriors of Christ. Christ is looking for warriors, just like King David. So let's check out the gifts. First Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians 12. There you go. We'll just go with 12. These are the gifts that the Lord gives. There are diversities of gifts right here for 12, four. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, the same Holy spirit is in us. Those that are saved, those that are the called, those that have been born again, that have died to the flesh. There are differences of ministries. Look at that different ministries there is like uh evangelism there's teachers there's preachers there's um ministries to expose false teachers false prophets and wolves in sheep's clothing but the same Lord six and there are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all the same God the Father the Son the Holy Spirit the Lord Jesus Christ Yahweh Yeshua the Messiah but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For the profit of all. Eight. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge. Through the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing. By the same Spirit. To another, The working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another different kinds of tongues. To another interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually as, as he wills. There's all the gifts of the spirit.
What is it for? For the profit of all. Not for yourself. For the profit of all. To edify the body of Christ. To edify the believers. The women and men of God. Everybody is created in the image of God. Everybody. But not all are sons and daughters of God. He will, he will give you the privilege to be the son of God. The sons of God. He will give you the right to become sons of God. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Born, but of God. Born again. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. So let's read it one more time. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, no, nor of the will of man, not according to man, but of God. By grace through faith. Let's go back. So the, the gifts, right? The gifts were right here. Okay, so one one gift that I highlighted a different discerning spirits. This gift right here can help you understand if there's a wolf. dressed in sheep's clothing to try to fool you trying to make you believe that that person is of God these wolves are trying to de deceive you to fool you to trick you to lie to you that way you don't enter the kingdom of God and if you are born again they're going to try to stop you from doing the will of God they're going to try to lead you the wrong direction that you may not worship the Lord. Distract you from growing in the faith. Take your money. Pray on you. So should we expose wolves in sheep's clothing? Should we expose wolves in sheep's clothing? Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. All right, so let's go. It's all the way to 15. Excuse me. Okay. And you will know them by their fruits. Beware of false prophets. Beware, everyone. As time 
goes on, the world is becoming more evil. More sin is increasing. That means beware of false prophets because more false prophets will come about. Who will come to you in sheep's clothing. False prophets in sheep's clothing. A sheep is a man and woman of God. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Keep an eye on them. Be watchful. Be watchful. Be sober. Because these false prophets are going about seeking whom they may devour. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, and his minions, and his false prophets, and his wolves, walk about like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he or they may devour. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Be careful out there, everyone. Things are getting bad out there. And you will know them by their fruits, so keep an eye on them. Check them out, see what they're doing. It is it going against the word? There's two two reasons why they might be going against the word. Either they're false prophets, false converts, or whatever false co converts, false prophets, um, you know, just a deceiver, just fake faking the funk, or they're just they're babies in the word. They're, they're speaking too quickly on the things they don't know about. Because you can be born again, but that doesn't mean you start teaching or explaining to somebody the scriptures. You know what the Apostle Paul did when the Lord called him? When the Lord called, called him and saved him? He went out. He went out for a few years, I think. For a few years and there, I believe that he was just, he, sum, he was submitted to the Lord, seeking the Lord, asking the Lord, learning from the Lord, being taught by the Lord before he went out and preached. Apostle Paul went out into the wilderness. And it is in, let's check out Galatians. Galatians, right? 117. One seventeen. Let's go to the whole chapter just in case. All right, so it's around 17. So here, <clears throat> this is when the Apostle Paul was called to apostleship by the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus appeared to him. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. See? So straight from Jesus. The word of God is Jesus. That's, that's, that should be your, own, your, your main teacher. Yeah, there's secondary teachers, pastors, teachers, 
apostles. No, no. There might still be apostles out there. Um, evangelists. Um, and people like that that can teach you. But your number one teacher is the revelation of Jesus Christ through, through his word. For you have heard of my formal, former, former conduct in Judaism. How I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. Look at that. This is where the Apostle Paul came from. He actually tried to destroy what the Lord Jesus was doing before he called him. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation. Being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. He was a, he was a hardcore Pharisee. Very religious. He knew the word, the Old Testament. The ins and outs of the Old Testament. He knew the law perfectly. More zealous. More exceedingly zealous. He was, he was up there. He knew, he knew everything about the, the law, the Old Testament. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son to me. There you go, God's son. That I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. He didn't right away go to worldly teachers, preachers. He didn't go to them to learn the word of God. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, the 12 apostles. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Damascus. So there you go. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. So three years in the wilderness being taught by the Lord Jesus. Revelation. Pure revelation from the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was out in the wilderness. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed before God, I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea which were in Christ, but they were hearing only. He, this is what they said, he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they glorify God in me. They believed it. So there it is, exposing wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm going to try my best to edify the body of Christ to use the gifts that God has given me. I still don't know 100% exactly what gift he has given to me, but one gift I do believe he gave me was the gift of discernment. The gift of discerning spirits. In order to discern if it's an actual wolf in sheep's clothing, that, that way I expose them and protect, protect the body of Christ. Especially those that are recently born again. The babies. Stay strong in the Lord, brothers and sisters of Christ. Let's fight this thing together. We're in a fight spiritually and physically. In Jesus' name, I, in Jesus name I pray and praise. Amen. <laughs>